G'day guys, Danny from Tackle Tactics, how are you? Uh, just down the beach uh, this afternoon. What I want to run through is just some, uh, you know, a dozen or so really quick tips I can give to you guys. Um, just when it comes to beach fishing, everything from spot location, tides, bait, gear. So I feel that about 90% of success comes down to the spot that you choose. Now, as I said, this, this beach is uh, about 30 kilometers long. So, you know, you want to find that really uh, good little spot. Um, and we're looking for gutters. So you've probably heard that term before. So a gutter is, um, you know, a really deep section, which is in close, uh, which fish can come into. Um, you know, which, which is in casting distance of the beach. So we're just going to go for a walk for a little bit and I'll show you uh, what I mean. Now, as you can see, a good thing to find is uh, when you first get to a beach is up high. Uh, not too much swell today or wind. Um, I generally like it when there's a little bit more swell and wind though, uh, to be honest. So as you can see, just down here, we've got a wave which is breaking now, and then you'll see it reform, which is a really good sign that there's some really good uh, deep water riding close to us here. Once again, another wave breaking, and if we watch it again, it will... So as you can see, if you watch this wave out the back here, it'll break on a bank, and then it will reform in here. Now, in here, just in front of us, um, you know, only about 10 meters out, is a really, really good gutter. So all this section just through here, we can see a few waves uh, forming and breaking out the back, but then they will come into a really dark section right in front of us. If we watch just again, we'll just see right out on the bank there, wave just break and we'll watch him and then it will once again reform. Okay, so all this section through here, another fuller wave right out the back will break. So shallow are out there. And then once it comes in, you can see it start to uh, reform. Now we're gonna talk about what tides to fish. Um, I prefer uh, the tide, the time leading up to high tide. It is about three hours before high tide. So you can see that gutter, as we spoke about just before, that really deep section right in front of us. Now, all that's gonna happen is the water is just going to rise and rise up the beach and that gutter is just uh, going to be about 20 meters down in front of us and it's going to get uh, fuller and fuller and fuller and as the sun goes down um, we'll see uh, hopefully see some dewies, uh, tailor, uh, salmon getting into that deep gutter section uh, which leads me on to my second point. I really like to fish late afternoon so when the, you know, when it gets getting dark at say 6 p.m., uh, a high tide around that time or just after. So we get down here at about say 3 p.m., uh, we find that good gutter, we fish uh, up until, you know, if you want to fish up till 7 or 8 p.m., we get that good dusk period, um, which is, you know, that prime time for a bite. Uh, we don't have to cast out very far and you know, and then you're at home at a, at a decent... Uh, another thing, a lot of people speak about uh, moon phases. So, you know, I like to uh, fish when it's basically as dark as possible. So, um, just at the, at the end of the moon and just the right at the start of the moon, that sort of four, five day period. I haven't really had any success off the beach when you've got that really uh, bright full moon shining down like a huge spotlight. Um, yeah, just haven't found that very good at all. I put it down to the fact that you're fishing off the beach, clear water, and you know, dewfish, mulloway, um, etc. The you know, uh, ambush predators. So getting up, riding close to, you know, right into the shallows uh, when they've got a big spotlight on them, uh, they're not going to really like. They they tend to you know get more down uh, the river or, or into deeper sections. So you know, just as, as dark as possible. Everyone's got their own opinions, but that's just uh, what I like.
talking baits. Um, yeah, I really enjoy, I really like fishing butterfly baits. So here we've got um, a tailor, it's been butterflied. What I mean by butterflied is, uh, you know, you've got these wings here. So you can see how I put the hooks in there. Um, and, you know, I usually catch all my own bait. Um, however, I had to get to the, the co-op. Um, the co-op's always a great spot to get locally um, sourced bait. So that is on a snell rig, um, coming up to a star sinker on 50 pound um, platypus leader. Just casted out that butterfly tailor on the uh, Akuma Trio Rex Surf, uh, an excellent rod. And what's even better is um, the Surf 8K reel. Holds a huge amount of line. Uh, here I've got 30 pound uh, braid main line um, with a 50 pound trace as I said before getting it out there um, is, is no worries at all so that's in the rod holder get yourself a rod holder from tackle shop or even from Bunnings from probably uh, for probably five bucks now on the second rod as we walk down to me next rod holder um, is the Akuma classic little bit lighter rod and on that rod uh, we've got um, just some gang hooks uh, a little bit lighter trace 30 pound trace onto the main line same rig um, now the humble pilly humble pilly is an excellent bait for uh, Taylor for salmon for brim for flooded so you know we've got the the dewy rod set up and we've also got one just you know a little bit further down here uh, with a with with the gang hooks just um you know set up for some more bread and butter fish round into his eye what was it like that that tide's starting to come up as you can see that's uh the furthest the wave's gone so far it's looking really good out there now really deep Another bait which is a prime dewy bait is a, a locally sourced, a locally caught uh, whole squid. Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate how to put that one on also with the um, with these 8 0 um, octopus hooks in the, in the Snell rig. So here, one furthest up your line goes right through his hood like such. This one comes down more near his head here, so plenty of the hook exposed. Um, and being held nice and straight in the water. So, uh, another beautiful boat there, the Jewies. So, you know, I, as I said, love the butterfly hole baits or the um, or a hole squid. So let's get him airborne, shall we? Beautiful day. Now, once you set up, uh, you've got your bait rods set up. As I said, I usually like to have two beach rods going. You can do one or two things. You can sit back, have a uh, have a lager, or have something to eat. Um, you know, watch the uh, watch the time go by, and hopefully those rods bend. Otherwise, if you're like me and you got a uh, ants in your pants um, you can take a third rod hey, uh, the wave power it's a long spin rod uh, five to nine kilo and you know spooled up with some light braid on the Azores 5500 a really balanced well rod uh, she's about nine foot tall and what you can do is one or two things uh, with a TT slug you can absolutely cast at them an absolute mile um, you can go for a little bit of a wander away from your main rods 
um, you know, looking for birds and bus stops that you can cast at. Or you can have, um, you know, use one of the, uh, something from the Z-Man range, cast into these gutters. You might get a, a, uh, a school dew or a flatty or something like that. So, you know, as I said, uh, you know, if you, if you want to do a little bit more whilst you're down here, you want to get maximum bunk bang for your buck, um, it's always worth going along, flicking a, flicking a metal, especially if you see some uh, birds around in this um, autumn into winter. Another bait uh, that I really like is the um, you know, fresh fillet of tailor. In this case, is a, a nice fillet of bonito, actually. And that's just on the, once again, on the gang hooks on the lighter, uh, on the lighter rod. Uh, that'll get you pretty much anything that's out there. Um, tailor, big tailor, brim, uh, a dewy, um, yeah, Nelly, anything, nice uh, bronze whale, a shark, anything that's, um, anything that's around will, uh, will, will take something like that also. What I like to do is um, I'll always equip a little flow stick um, to the tips of my rods. Um, so once it becomes dark, they'll light up and you can uh, just sit back and you can see your rods bend over. Um, otherwise you've really got no way of, uh, of telling unless you've got hold of your rods. So they're only worth uh, two or three bucks from any tackle store, so uh, get yourself a handful of those too. So we've got both rods set up now, um, and now it's just a little bit of a waiting game. Um, and what we're waiting for is that tire to come up, that gutter to get deeper in here, and the last key element is for the sun to fall. And you know, once you get those three things combining, um, that low light period. Um, you know, combined with that higher rising tide, um, you know, that is exactly what you, you're after in beach fishing. Um, you know, you don't need to cast it out a million miles, all right? It's all about finding that really good, um, really good spot, you know, and I'm really confident you can come down here and uh, fish with a hand line and catch uh, fish, you know? You really don't need to cast it out a million miles. It's all about just, as I said, finding that 